Ah, the lovely sound of minor chords. And we'll be digging down deep into that in today's episode of Dulce America. Welcome, everybody. My name is Bing Futch. Thank you for joining me. If you've been following some of the workshops I've done in the episodes this past year, it's been a long year already, uh, but it's going by quickly, then you know we've been focusing on music theory fundamentals. And last week we talked about the naturally occurring major chords in every single key. These are the one, four, and five chords. And we're going to be talking today about the two, three, and six chords. Those are the minor chords, and we'll also get into that rascally seventh the diminished chord. But first, I want to say thank you to one of my patrons on Patreon. That is David Easement today. David, thank you very much for upping your pledge recently. And for all of my patrons who are there on a daily basis, I thank you very, very much from the bottom of my heart because you helped to fire up this entire organization here. All the little hidden costs that happen every single day from server upgrades to uh, equipment upgrades, lights, backdrops, all kinds of stuff. Back in the day, I really couldn't afford to make this stuff happen, but you guys have just made it possible for me to expand, improve production on this show, and everything else that happens coming out of Studio Casa de Milagro. So I thank all my patrons because you really are, and I know this sounds corny, you guys really are the wind beneath my wings. Thank you, thank you so much, David and everybody. If you're interested in what this Patreon thing is, think of it like Netflix or Hulu, but there are many different artists who all offer something and you can get into what they do for a very, very low amount of money per month. For me, $5 a month gets you everything that I've ever produced. All my CDs, books, tablature, and videos are yours for $5 a month. And that not only includes everything I've done, it includes everything I'm doing every single week, whether it be books, new albums, new video products, and of course, things happening behind the scenes that nobody else gets to see online. If you're interested in such a thing, you can visit this link down below, patreon.com slash bingfutch. Go to the featured tag section, click on open house, and all of the stuff you find there on that page, the open house page, is yours to download download for free. Try before you buy, so to speak, and if you like what you see, please do consider becoming a patron like David Eastman. Again, David, thank you very much. So we're going to dig down deeper into the well of music theory today and look at the minor chords that are in every single key. Now just to recap, we looked at the scale, and so for our sake, since we're usually in the home key of D major, we look at the D major scale. Every single note of the D major scale has a number assigned to it, and that is called the scale degree. And you can use this to figure out a lot of really cool things within music theory. So if we've got our scale numbered one through seven, every single one of those notes can be used to build a chord using that particular note as the root of the chord or the bottom note. So we found out last week that if you build chords off of the first, fourth, and fifth scale degree, or the first, fourth, and fifth notes of the scale, you'll end up with major chords. And these three chords are the most popular chords that you're gonna find in music all around the world. They're happy, they're upbeat, and they're very powerful chords. They lead to each other very, very powerfully and very nicely. And so people like to go with them. But you know, if music was all major chords, it wouldn't be nearly as interesting, nor would it reflect real life because we need a little bit of balance in there between the up happy and sweet we need some sour serious and sad and that's where our minor chords come into play so we can build our minor chords off of the second third and sixth notes of the scale now that leaves just one scale degree that's not represented by a major or a minor chord and that's the seventh scale degree and that's going to give us a diminished chord and we'll talk more about what makes these things different major minor and diminished so let's go ahead and get into it now with some demonstrations first of all as i mentioned before we can build a chord off of every single note in the scale let's take a look at the ingredients of all the chords so that we know what we're altering in each one in order to get the final result starting off with the major chord you've got three notes in order to make what's called a triad a basic chord that's going to be your root, which is the lowest pitched note. And then you've got a major third. That's going to be the middle note. And then a perfect fifth is going to be your highest pitched note in that chord of three notes altogether. That's a major chord. Now, only one thing changes with a minor chord. The root stays the same. The perfect fifth stays the same. But that middle note, that major third, it's actually going to come down a half step. 
Remember when we take something down a half step, we flatten it. When we take something up a half step, we sharpen it. So by taking that major third down a half step, we end up with a minor third, and that's the only difference between the minor chord and the major chord. Now, these names I'm using, major third, minor third, perfect fifth, those are names of intervals. And as we learned before earlier this year, an interval is how we describe the distance between two notes. In this case, the distance is from the root note, the root that we're starting with to build the chord, and how far it is to the next note. So it is from the root to that second note in the chord. Um, it's going to be a major third for major chords. The interval between the root and that middle note is a major third. That middle note, however, is going to come down a half step. The interval grows shorter by a half step, and now we're looking at a minor third interval between the root and that middle note. And then the perfect fifth, the interval is going to be a perfect fifth between the root and that top note. So um, the diminished chord is an unusual sounding chord. It sounds like this. Compared to our major chord, up and happy. Solid, smiley. And our minor chord, sort of serious, melancholy. And then you got this. It's a little wacky sounding, but it's got its place and its uses, of course. So a diminished chord will be a root, same as the rest of the chords. And that minor third interval is going to be the same for that middle note. But now that top note, the perfect fifth, we're actually going to take that down a half step as well. And we're going to call that a diminished fifth. So we've got a root, a minor third, and a diminished fifth to create a diminished chord. Crazy sounding thing. And we'll talk about that a little later on. So what we're going to do now is we're going to look as we go along the scale degrees. And remember that these are all naturally occurring chords using the special hop, skip, and jump method of putting all of these notes together. This is with no alterations, no switch outs, no accidentals, nothing like that. So starting with D, that's the first note of the scale. So all we have to do to find out what's going to be inside of that chord, which we know is going to be a major chord because all of our major chords are going to come out of the one, the four, and the five positions. D is going to be our bottom note, so there's our root. So we got to find out what notes are inside a D major chord. Remember, all we have to do is take that seven note scale, hop, skip, and jump, hop over every other note, and include the notes that you land on. So from D, we're going to hop over E and go to F sharp. And then from F sharp, we're going to hop over G and go to A. There we have D, F sharp, and A for our D major chord. Now we move on to the second scale degree, and this is going to be giving us our first minor chord to work with. Since we're starting with E, we'll be building an E minor chord. So do your hop, your skip, and your jump. And you'll find out that we've got E, G, and B for an E minor chord. So we had D major to start. And now we're adding E minor. Let's go to our third scale degree now. We're starting with F sharp as the third note of the scale. We know that we're going to be building off of that scale degree, getting a minor chord. And what are the ingredients? Let's go ahead and take a look. Start with F sharp. We're going to hop over G and go to A, hop over B and go to C. There we have all the ingredients we need, F sharp, C sharp, and A for an F sharp minor chord. We'll move on to the next scale degree. That's going to be G. It's going to be the fourth scale degree giving us a major chord. Hop, skip, and jump. That'll give you G, B, and D for a G major chord. Moving to the fourth scale, the fifth scale degree, sorry, fifth scale degree is going to be A, and we are going to hop, skip, and jump to where we have A, C sharp, and E, and that's going to give us an A major chord. We now move to the sixth scale degree, and this is the last of our minor um, uh, chords coming out of this. With B as the sixth note, we're going to start there. We're going to go from B. We're going to hop over C sharp, go to D, and then hop over E and go to F sharp. So we've got um, the three ingredients for our B minor chord. 
And now that seventh scale degree, the really crazy one, we're going to build our diminished chord, and this is going to be a C sharp diminished. The seventh note is C sharp. That's going to be our bottom note. So we're going to hop over D and go to E, and then we're going to hop over F sharp and go to G, and that's going to give us the three notes for our C sharp diminished chord. And that's all of the notes that are naturally occurring, or all of the chords that are naturally occurring in the key of D major. Now, this same trick can be used for any key. Say, for example, you want to work out of the key of C major. All you have to do is write out the C major scale, and then do your scale degrees. Run through every one of those, all seven of them, and do the hop, skip, and jump. And by doing that, you'll get the ingredients, all three notes for all seven chords. And so if you don't want to have to commit all that stuff to memory, this is a very, very easy way. Just write out the scale, do the hop, skip, and jump, and know that one, four, five are going to give you major chords, two, three, six will give you minor chords, and seven will give you a diminished chord. Now, is that all there is? No, of course not. Music is a lot more complicated than that, and we can do a lot of alterations called accidentals or non-native chords. That means that we can change the one chord from a major to a minor if we want to. We can change the four chord to a flat four if we want to. We can change the seven chord to a seven seven chord if we want to. We can do all kinds of crazy alterations, but the way we're covering it right now is that everything we're doing is no alterations, no changes whatsoever, all naturally occurring. And that's really what we're focusing on right now. So let's take a look at some of the minor chords and the positions you're going to find them in. Starting off with our first minor, which is E minor, we can play that with one, one, three. It's an L-shaped chord. Oh, it sounds so good, doesn't it? We also have an E. We can invert that chord also and play a three, one, one. When you invert a chord, you are just changing the voicing of the chord, meaning you are changing the pitches of the notes inside of that chord. You're not changing the notes themselves, but you are changing the pitch of those notes. So we'll have the same three notes, but they'll be in different areas, and that will give the chord a different sound. We'll also find an E minor in a slant position, a slant shape, three, four, five. And we can invert that, 5, 4, 3. We also have an extended slant, E minor. It's going to be 5, 6, 8. And we can invert that as well. Then we've got our next minor, F sharp minor, L shape chord, 2, 2, 4. Inverted, 4, 2, 2. Four, five, six and a half. Six and a half, five, four. And I'm keeping these mainly in the first octave before we start getting into the second octave. Um, so there are these examples are also up here in the second octave, but I'm really focusing on the seventh fret through uh, the open position here. Then we've got B minor. It's L shaped chord five, five, seven. Seven, five, five. We can also do an extended slant, two, three, five. We can invert that to five, three, two. And what would be considered a slant chord, even though we're not actually fretting on the melody string, is two, one, zero. And the inversion, zero, one, two. So those are all of the locations of those three important minor chords in the first octave. And then, of course, we've got our diminished chord, six and a half, six, eight. And you can invert that as well. And you're only going to find one of those in the first octave, one example of that, one instance of that. Um, and in time, you'll learn how to use it. But for right now, it's just kind of neat to know that it's there, and it has its own very specific chord shape. All right. 
So I wanted to get you all up to speed on all the naturally occurring chords that we have based on each one of those scale degrees. So when you do look at those scale degrees by themselves, we're using Roman numerals, uppercase and lowercase. The reason we do this is it's sort of a musical shorthand. What you can do is, for example, if you're working on a piece of music and you're trying to transpose it, meaning you want to change the key so it's more suitable for your voice or for somebody else's voice. Can you imagine you write out all the chords to this song and then you realize that's too high or too low? Now you have to rewrite all the different other chords to a song in a different key. This way, what you can do is you can just simply write down the scale degrees and then have as a reference the scale itself. So you can write, you know, a capital one in Roman numerals and know that that's going to mean your first scale degree. You can also write a lowercase Roman numeral two, which is going to be with dots over the ones like little uh, lowercase i's. And that's going to mean you're going to be playing a minor chord when you see that lower case. And that's why we use Roman numerals as opposed to Arabic numerals, because you can capitalize the Roman numerals and know at a glance if you're dealing with a major chord or a minor chord. So say, for example, I put a 1-4-5 chord progression up on the screen. It's magic. So... By looking at that right off the bat, first of all, you know that all of our chords in this chord progression are going to be major chords. One, four, and five. So the other thing you can look at here is uh, what is a chord progression, for example. That just means that this chord is going to follow that chord and follow that chord. So one, four, five could mean these are the three chords in this song, like boiled in cabbage. You could call it a one, four, five chord progression, but it's actually, to be more specific, a one, four, one, five chord progression. And why is that? Because the first chord of boiled in cabbage is D. There's your one. The second chord of boiled in cabbage down is G. That's going to be your four chord. Now, instead of going to the five chord right after that, we actually go back down to the one chord. And then we go to our five chord. So technically speaking, it is a one, four, one, five chord progression. So we could change that up if we wanted to. Only where you can is, is the deal. And what I mean by that is with a diatonic fretboard on the mountain dulcimer, usually we only have the option of playing one chord, one type of chord or the other. Notice that we play and just pretend that I don't have a one and a half fret, which makes this sort of thing easier, or the six and a half fret. Notice that we play D major, but not typically D minor. Notice that we play E minor, but not typically E major. Notice that we play F sharp minor, but not typically F sharp major, because we're kind of stuck into one or the other. Same thing with G major. We don't have a G minor. Now, these extra half steps that we have, one and a half fret, six and a half fret, they are half steps, which means that we can take that one note of the major chord, remember, the major third, we can drop it down a half step and make it a minor third interval. And there are places on the mountain dulcimer that have the extra half step where we can do that. For example, here is a D major chord. The major third is on the bass string, F sharp. By having the one and a half fret, I have an F natural, meaning I can take the major third inter interval and I can flatten it and make it a minor third interval, thereby giving me a D minor chord. Same thing with A major. In this particular shape, C sharp is our major third, it's on the middle string, and that one and a half fret gives me the ability to take that C sharp down a half step to C natural, and thereby getting an A minor. So you can make alterations. So maybe, for example, I would go with a one, four, one, minor five uh, chord progression. That means we would play D major, G major, go back to D major, and then instead of playing A major, because we're going to play a minor four, uh, minor five instead of a five chord, that means that we are actually gonna have a lowercase five, which is going to be just a little tiny V, 
and that's going to change the sound of things a little bit. Ooh, isn't that serious? That changes the whole mood of everything, doesn't it? So, you know, we can make alterations like that to make music more interesting, bring in different emotions and feelings. And that is where these scale degrees would come in handy when you're writing out a piece of music. Instead of having to write it out over and over again while you're trying to figure the transposition of it, you can simply write down the scale degrees and then have your reference handy to see what chords those actually are. The one, the four, the five, the minor two, the minor three, whatever they might be, and even change some things if you would like to. That's one way of doing it, and it's also a great way of just uh, learning some of the great standard chord progressions that are out there. Just go up and pick up some scale degrees off the internet and then play them and see which ones you like because chord progressions are sort of like the foundation of so much of our music. I like minor chords because they provide balance and uh, again, when we're writing songs, there are a lot of emotions being packed in there and it just can't all be said with major chords. And so sometimes the minor chords really open things up for you. The thing I started off with is um, something that I've been working on here for a little bit. And it's mostly minor chords using major chords to bring out some deeper shadings. So that's an, a lot of minor chords. I'm going from open D to F sharp minor, going directly to a B minor, back to F sharp minor, then to an E minor, back to B minor, and then down to A. And then the second time through, I changed that chord progression just a little bit. From D, the one chord, to the minor 3, F sharp minor, to the minor 6, B minor, back to the minor 3, F sharp minor. This time I'm going to come up and do a G suspended 2 chord. Okay, what's a suspended 2 chord? It may be too early for that, but it's basically a major chord where we take the major 3rd, the 3rd note of the scale, and we temporarily suspend it to either the second note or the fourth note of the scale instead of the third note of the scale. So if I took it up to the fourth note of the scale, since I'm playing a G major chord, I'm going to think about the G major scale. The fourth note of the G major scale is C. And my thumb will move up to the sixth fret. So by playing G on the bass string and D, on the middle string, I've got the root and I've got the fifth, the top and bottom of the chord taken care of. But now instead of playing the major third in the middle of that chord, I'm going to play the four. And this is now a G suspended four chord. It's pretty. It sounds very restless, like it's not quite done saying what it wants to say, right? What I was just playing there is a G suspended 2 chord. I've taken the major 3rd and I've temporarily suspended it over to the 2nd note of the scale, which is A. So, by playing this, it creates a real pretty, pretty uh, sound. It also, however, does not sound like it's happy staying right where it is. It sounds like it kind of wants to keep doing something else, and that is called tension. Music is full of tension and release. You create tension by using chords and then you resolve and you create a release. So one way to do that would be to go... Here's our tension. And by resolving and taking that two and moving it back up to its proper place for a major chord, we have resolution. Tension. 
resolution. Resolution feels so good. Tension. Resolution. Just some of the tricks that you can use when you are creating your own songs by moving chords around. And you can put them in very, very interesting orders to create all different types of musical magic. And we will get deeper into the science of moving chords around in the next episode. So I think this has been a lot for this episode for you guys to digest. Go ahead and practice with your major chords, your minor chords. See if you can do something with that diminished chord. String them together in some of your favorite patterns and see what happens. And then when we come back, I'll let you in on some secrets on how to navigate chord progressions with gusto, with verve. In other words, it means awesomeness, I suppose. <laughs> Thank you guys for joining me. Until next time, this is Bing Futch. Thank you again, patrons. We'll see you next time.